Hi, everyone. Welcome to Well Management and Policy uh, Virtual Day. Um, I'm Elisa Maffioli, and I will uh, faculty here, and I will um, walk through some slides about the program. Um, so just to get started, I'm an assistant professor. I started a couple of years ago, and I'm part of the residential master uh, admission uh, committee. I, uh, I'm an economist. I did my PhD in economics at Duke University, and I have now about eight years of experience working in development economics. Uh, so as part of the program, I teach an elective course um, on global health, uh, and I also teach uh, cost-effective analysis. Um, my research really entails health policy in low and middle income uh, countries. And I cover global health topics. Uh, I work on malaria, on the Ebola epidemic, on nutrition, maternal and child health. And as a service, I also um, uh, worked as a consultant for several international organizations uh, like Save the Children, uh, the International Growth Center, um, and now UNICEF. Um, so um, I know you guys are many, so if you just want to uh, write in the chat box um, uh, your introduction, if you want to, your name, where you are from, and your health management and policy interests, and who would be of help to, uh, to know you better, too. Okay, so uh, the health management and policy mission is cultivate exceptional leaders who create and apply knowledge to enhance the health of individuals and, and communities. And the vision of the department is really to design and implement an affordable system uh, to improve health and transform healthcare uh, around the globe. So there are several um, uh, values that the department has and as a community uh, that we have that are um, integrity, excellence, learning, definitely inclusiveness, collaboration, and also equity. So what do we do as um, HMP department? It's really like a double mission. So we have both a teaching and a research mission. In terms of teaching mission, we definitely provide you with the graduate education. And with this, we hope uh, it will fit in improving uh, management and policy practices when you actually uh, will go to work uh, in the real world. and uh, ultimately influence health policy. Uh, but on the other hand, as a faculty, we also have a research mission. So in addition to uh, teaching, we, we conduct research to create new knowledge at the, at the frontier. And that would also um, have the scope of improving management and policy practices, as well as influence health policy. So just to give you um, a sense of what, what uh, the HMP faculty have been uh, doing. Um, um, there are a few highlights that I want to, to bring up. Um, the first one is really like uh, um, a, a, um, uh, Nathan Sinai that developed voluntary health insurance plan. It was really the prototype for Blue Shield back in 1939. A couple of different faculty that provided leadership for uh, viewing and studying medical care from a public health perspective in the 60s, that was really a new perspective compared to uh, more the, the medical field. Um, Avedis uh, Donavidian developed a new uh, model uh, to uh, improve quality that are still used to it today. Um, Ken Warner provided evidence based and leadership for a tobacco control policy that is still relevant again today. Other faculty also uh, launched uh, the Center for Value-Based Insurance Design, that, um, uh, that uh, the concept of which uh, are part of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. And finally, uh, Richard uh, contributed to the development of a uh, prospective payment system that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services employ to improve uh, patient choice as well as quality of care. So the program has two, um, I mean, in HMP, there are two different um, uh, programs. One is the Master of Public Health and one is the Master of Health uh, Services and Administration. So just to give you a sense um, uh, about the two uh, 
different programs. The, uh, the MPH focuses on different factors that really influence population health. This can be socioeconomic uh, determinants, uh, beliefs and practices, or risk factors, um, environmental factors. And we think uh, um, the Master for um, Public Health is appropriate for those of want to have a career in public health policy and planning and advocacy, um, both in the private sector and in the public sector, and is also appropriate for those who want to work uh, in international health agency like WHO and CDC. Uh, well, uh, the MHSA program is more about organization, financing, marketing, and the management of, of a healthcare institution. So we, uh, with this program, we prepare students to uh, have a management role in hospital clinics um, and a really seeking career as a planner, policy analysis, or consultant. But all the focus is again about uh, financing, organization, quality, and delivery of healthcare services, again, both in the public and private sector. Um, and just to uh, uh, to let you uh, know that, like uh, you can you can uh, switch between the programs at the beginning of the first year. Uh, so uh, if you feel like you didn't do the right choice at the beginning, there is uh, a possibility to switch uh, to the program. So this is important uh, for you to keep in mind when you start here. Uh, so what is really uh, incredible about the program is also the alumni network. Um, so it's one of the association that um, is one of the oldest and largest uh, of its type in the US and there are more than 4,000 alumni um, around uh, around the globe and specifically also in North America that um, have leadership position in healthcare and health policy. Um, so they live and work in, in about you know, all the 50 states in the, in the US and also over 30 countries. So the alumni network is really important because they are very well engaged through the mentoring of the current students uh, they have to the uh, uh, recruiting, uh, the campus visit and the teaching, so they come to do lectures as well. And I think they, they have an important role because uh, they have been through the program, they're now uh, uh, part of the health management and health policy world, so they can really help you um, uh, figuring out like to take advantage of the program and then uh, to find the right job for you. Okay, this is just a map of, uh, of um, how the alumni network is really spread out through the country. There uh, is a kind of old one, so there are even more uh, alumni now, but uh, they are mainly in the Midwest, in California, and, and as you can see, like all over the US. Uh, so when we when you come to the program, we really want you to uh, have um, or learn about uh, these specific competencies. Uh, so there are three of them. The first one, the first uh, big uh, category of competencies is the, like transformation. So we want you to be a transformative leader. Um, that means that we want you to uh, have the analytical thinking, the financial uh, skills, innovative thinking, as well as being able to uh, do achievement orientation, strategic orientation, and community orientation. The second big competence is really execution. So we don't want you just to uh, think what to do, but we want you to make sure you execute it in the right way, in the appropriate way. And to do that, there are a lot of different uh, skills that you need to uh, then apply in the real world, like accountability, um, leadership, of course, collaboration, communication skill, being able to make an impact and influence policymaker, um, and so on. And third uh, is also like being able to engage people and manage people. So uh, there is definitely a lot of importance about uh, yourself. So increase your self-confidence, self-development, talent development, as well as work in teams and manage uh, human resources and understanding other people. So I, we think these three companies are really what you what you want you to get out of the program and and add those to then um, apply them in, in the, your, your future job. Uh, this is what makes really like a health leader. Uh, there are three big unique aspects of um, uh, HMP. Uh, the first one is really the program is a blend of management and policy. So you will, uh, independently of which course you will really retake, you will have a bit of both uh, management skills and policy skills. And I think this is unique about 
the HMP uh, program at, in Michigan. Um, so we want you like uh, be important uh, manager, but also uh, learn how to influence policy. Uh, the second unique aspect that we already uh, touch on a little bit is really the alumni network. Uh, they are very committed to the students, and this is like absolutely important uh, for you to have a uh, more in-depth understanding of the program and what's uh, the right fit for you and uh, where your relative advantage is uh, when you choose a future job. And uh, third, definitely, and this is also one of the reasons why I chose Michigan when I came, is really this uh, interdisciplinary environment. So if you are a proactive student, there are like so many opportunities, not only at the HMP, but also at the School of Public Health, at the business school, at the policy school, at the medical school. There is a lot of interaction between uh, faculty and students, and uh, you're definitely encouraged to take other uh, courses in other schools or make the curriculum uh, fit for what you are interested in. And this is something that um, is very important because there are so many um, opportunities that you can really build in uh, what is more most uh, important for you and of interest for you. Uh, so uh, one important part of the program is also uh, the internship. So um, in addition to uh, all the material that we'll be covering in class, the real practical experience, like some of the practical uh, problems that I experienced during classwork, uh, the real practical experience is your internship. The internship will need to be done between the first uh, year and the second year in the summer, between the first and second year. And this is just an overview of uh, what, what students end up uh, doing. So, the majority really uh, work or did their internship in the hospital um, uh, settings, but there is a lot of vari a lot of variation for the other um, 44 percent of the people. So some people work in research, in government, in consulting, uh, nonprofit organization, or academia. Uh, what is really uh, I think uh, also important to highlight is that 90 percent of those internships are paid and. Also for the unpaid one, uh, the department will help you and will support you with the funding. And those uh, who work uh, for a paid internship, they, um, they gain on average $22 per hour. Um, so the internship has been, is really like not only uh, done in, in the US, but can also be done globally. So, uh, uh, and these are really driven by either an HMP connection, the majority of them, 35% really, um, uh, is through a alumni, uh, the alumni network, and also a little bit of them are through personal connection. Um, and, and finally, uh, what we really uh, do is be successful and then find a job that is the right fit for you and think the job that you like. So every everyone are graduating in the program are employed or are, are pursuing a PhD program. Um, there is some variation in terms of the uh, the salary of, um, between 45 and 160 k, but really the average salary about 77 thousand um, dollars. And as you can see from the bottom part of the slides, uh, uh, all the, ma the majority of the students are really satisfied with their job and 43% work in the health provider hospital setting, 22% in consulting. There is, again, a lot of variation. Some people work in academia, in the health insurance companies, um, in the government, nonprofit organization, and in the pharma industry, and so on. Uh, so there are three key uh, inputs for success, uh, definitely your coursework when you come to, to the program, the internship as a practical experience, and all your professional development that you gain, not only uh, from the faculty, especially from your course and other people in the program. Uh, this is what uh, we hope will make you a, a successful health leader. So you can follow the um, uh, HMP um, activities on the Instagram and Twitter account. And uh, you should feel free to reach out. This is my email. Um, anytime if you have definitely more, more question or any curiosity that um, uh, you want to know more. So thank you so much and hope your day goes well.
So my name is Haley Tomlinson. Um, I am a current second year master's in health services administration. And I just saw uh, the question come through the chat and we will come back to that. I'm so sorry, I just thought that. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of an overview about student life from a student's perspective. And then uh, you'll have an opportunity to ask myself and a couple of my fellow students some questions. So student life in health management and policy. So there are a few things that we feel make Michigan different, and Eliza talked about this from the faculty perspective. What you'll notice is that there will be a lot of overlap between some of the things I talk about in my pro in my presentation and some of the things that she talked about in her hers, um, which we did not collaborate when putting these presentations together. So I think that really speaks to um, how the goals of the students and the faculty in this department align. Uh, so a couple of the things that we feel make us different. We have a really diverse student body in terms of background and experience when they come into the program. So um, we have students from not only all over the US, but all over the world. And um, we get the opportunity to take classes with physicians and consultants and people that have worked um, in policy, um, some people that have had really interesting internship experiences. And so there's a lot of opportunity not only to learn from the faculty, but also from each other. Uh, and then. Eliza mentioned this, but um, we have a really great alumni base. Um, they're very involved with us here as students. Um, they'll come back for uh, small coffee chats. They'll come back to your presentations. They'll come back to do mock interviews with you and go over your resume and cover letter. Um, there's mentoring opportunities, which I'll cover in a minute, but uh, it's truly remarkable being able to not only have them all come back here and be so invested in us as students, but also to be able to go out into the world and make connections just because of the Block M. Uh, and then I just wanted to touch on something that I feel makes us great, this photo there. Um, our program was recognized last year with the Award for Excellence in Healthcare Leadership Development by the Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Management Education. Sorry, that was a mouthful. Um, but basically, one of the things that I think us think makes us really different here is that while we are preparing you to be successful as a health administrator or as a policymaker or whatever that is, the focus is on being an effective leader. So we don't focus on one specific area necessarily. We empower you to be a successful leader, whatever sector of the healthcare industry you want to go in, which I think is something that really makes us unique. Um, Another great thing about the University of Michigan, we are a huge university. Uh, please, if you have not looked around the university website, um, take some time to do so when you have a chance. We have several of the top nationally ranked graduate schools here on our campus. So some of the most common ones that our students will take classes in, um, at the top there is the Ross School of Business. The bottom right is the Ford School of Public Policy. And the bottom left is the College of Engineering, which also houses the Center for Entrepreneurship. Um, so we have opportunity to take classes in any school on campus. I have classmates that are currently taking classes at the School of Nursing, at the School of Social Work. I think I have one classmate that's taking classes at the law school. So really, whatever your interest is, you have a unique opportunity to tailor it specifically to what you want, even if those courses aren't offered here within the School of Public Health. Inside the classroom, our courses do a really good job of emphasizing real world skill building. And I'll touch on this a little bit in the different ways we do that, but um, it's not just theory. We do a pretty good job of applying things in practice. So uh, as Eliza mentioned, we have a world-class faculty. They focus on a variety of things. Uh, you have the opportunity to really leverage their strengths and knowledge and learn more about specific areas of interest for you. We utilize case studies a lot in our classes, um, and case competitions are a, an extracurricular activity that I'll touch on again in a minute, but basically, um, when you're learning concepts in class, they're always applied to a scenario that either has happened to a healthcare organization or could happen to a healthcare organization. You get to critically think through that problem, um, work through the problem solving process. It's not just, you know, in theory, this is what could happen. It's okay, this is a problem that happened. Now take the skills and tools you know and fix it. Uh, so that's a really great way to, um, like I said, get some applied practice and not just, um, you know, it, it's easier to feel like you know something coming out of it when you've when you've actually taken it and put it on there. Um, we have a very strong focus on collaboration and interdisciplinary teams in our program. Uh, I would say that probably 65% of the work we do is group work. 
uh, some of the classes maybe a little more. Um, and that's not only collaboration within our program, but also uh, with uh, other programs in the School of Public Health. So we have a few classes that we take with the other five degree programs offered here in the School of Public Health, and we have the opportunity to work with and learn from all of them. Uh, there are also a lot of extracurricular interdisciplinary opportunities to, again, really expand beyond what you're learning here just in HMP uh, and see how all the rest of public health intersects with what we do here in our department. Um, and then lastly, there's opportunities for applied practice through our capstone course. So in addition to the summer internship that Eliza mentioned, uh, we have a capstone course that's taken in the final semester of your time here, and it's basically a consultancy course. So, uh, for example, right now, my team is um, doing a consultancy for Covenant Community Care, which is a federally qualified health center in Detroit, and we are helping them decide, well, we're creating their business plan for them to either um, operate their pharmacy in-house or outsource it. This is a problem that they're having right now. This is going to immediately impact their operations. Um, and so not only does that give you a really great opportunity to get that kind of experience before you go into the workforce, but also it just says a lot, I think, to me. It's um, really like confidence building to know that these organizations have so much faith in us and our program that they trust us to take on this work for them. Um, I think that's a really fantastic thing. So outside the classroom, the University of Michigan has over 1,600 student organizations, so there is literally something for anything you're interested in, I promise. Um, over 35 of those organizations are dedicated specifically to public health. So some of the most common ones joined by our cohort um, include the Michigan Health Executive Student Association, the Health Policy Student Association, Women in Health Leadership, the Institute for Healthcare Improvement Open School, Students Engaged in Global Health, Sexual and Gender Diversity in Public Health, Public Health Students of African Descent, and the Organization in Aid of SPH International Students. Um, I know that was a mouthful, but I didn't want to try and type that all out on the slide. So if you have any questions about any of those organizations specifically, uh, we'll talk about some of them on the panel, but also feel free to put those in the chat box. Um, but these are just some of the ones that, that we, uh, like I said, frequent the most. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but it just gives you kind of an idea of, of the different organizations available to you here. And, sorry. Um, so these organizations do a variety of uh, different kinds of events. So um, they'll do social events, they'll do philanthropy, um, they will, um, have speaker series and have um, both alumni and just other leaders in the field come in and talk. They offer a variety of leadership development, uh, networking, and then outside of the organizations, there's additional opportunities for leadership development. So um, I mentioned case competitions briefly earlier. Uh, the top picture there is the uh, winning team from the Cleveland Clinic case competition last year. Uh, they were our HMP students um, in my class and we traditionally do very well in case competitions in HMP. That's something we're quite proud of. Um, but that's, again, another opportunity to really apply what you're learning in the classroom and really get a sense of what it's like to work through in, a, in um, usually kind of a crunch time. So case competitions can vary in length. Some of them will be um, over a weekend. Some of them will be over a day. Some of them, like Cleveland Clinic, are over a few months where you have time to refine your presentation. Um, and they also vary in terms of who they're presenting to. So uh, some of them are more designated to be competitions to, you know, really um, just give students that opportunity. Uh, some of them, like Cleveland Clinic, this was uh, over a, uh, they were developing an insurance product with Oscar. And this was something that the executives uh, sat in on the final presentations and were looking for actual solutions to uh, the problems they were working through. So a lot of great opportunities there as well. And we actually uh, just developed a course in our program um, to prepare you to, to do case competitions, to kind of show you how to work through those cases, uh, how to put together an effective presentation. So very much supported at a department level as well. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for networking, both in and outside of the program. A lot of our student organizations foster uh, or um, provide networking opportunities, both within their student organization itself and with other student organizations. Um, more opportunities for applied practice through some of our student organizations. So the Institute for Healthcare Improvement Open School, 
Uh, you can join a team and work on a process improvement project for that um, that spans from about October to March. Um, so about six months that you get to work on a process improvement project, uh, usually across the street at Michigan Medicine. Very convenient to have that right across the street from us. Uh, and then outside of the school entirely, there's also professional organizations in the area. So pictured there at the bottom is the Midwest chapter for the American College of Healthcare Executives. Uh, they put on um, events usually once every month to six weeks, um, and all of them are either free or $10 for students to attend, even if you're not a member. So that's a great opportunity to get some national level speakers to, um, again, get some more leadership development and to meet a lot of individuals who are at varying levels of their career, Southeast Michigan and Northern Ohio actually working in some of the roles that we're looking to go into. So just to touch on, again, briefly, what we feel are some of the outstanding opportunities here at Michigan. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to do research with professors. It is by no means required, but we do, as we mentioned, have faculty working on a variety of things, um, and all of them are happy to talk with students and to connect with them about getting involved, with the, involved in their research if a student is interested. Um, mentoring, we have two mentoring programs. One is with our alumni. So we have, it's called Public Health Connect, and you are matched with um, an established HMP alumni. You have the opportunity to indicate if you would like someone more recently graduated, so anywhere from like two to five years, to someone more established in the field, um, you know, 10, 15 years, whatever it is you're looking for, uh, and a variety of other things that you match on as well, like uh, professional interests. Um, but they're there to be your mentor, they're just yours. Um, they will review your resume and cover letters with you. They will provide professional expertise. Um, some of them can get you, you know, into their workplace and give you sort of a behind the scenes look. Uh, they could be a sounding board for you when you're trying to make your own professional decisions. So that's a really great opportunity. And then you're also paired as a first year student in our program with a second year student. Um, and that just kind of provides you with a go-to person in terms of navigating the program, helping you think through maybe what electives you want to take, what the internship application process is like. We really work to make sure you have a lot of support when you're coming through our program. And then again, just the summer internships. Um, I think you can see there, there's, uh, and as Eliza's slide shows, there's a really wide variety of sectors of the industry that our students go into for internships. And I think that's a fantastic strength of our program. Um, it is not all uh, healthcare administration or provider space, which is certainly of interest, um, but the fact that you are able to really customize what you're looking for, um, I think is, is a great thing. Working as a graduate student, uh, so a lot of people ask if there's opportunity to work as a graduate student. My answer to that would be yes, although again, you're welcome to ask the panel and see their perspectives on it. Um, the university itself has a lot of opportunities in terms of student employment. If you're just looking for something to help pay the bills, there's a lot of resources here um, and a lot of things that they can connect you with as well as in Ann Arbor in general. Um, but um, perhaps more excitingly, uh, there's also a lot of opportunities related more to our program um, here. So we have uh, several institutions um, affiliated with the university that you can get a job or internship at uh, both over the summer and uh, full time throughout the year. So uh, just a few of them. We have the Center for Value Based Insurance Design. We have the Center for Health Engineering and Patient Safety. We have the Institute for Health Policy and Innovation, um, the Center for Health Research and Transformation, um, the Kidney Epidemiology and Cost Center. So and several of these organizations, um, in addition to being university resources, uh, are staffed by some of our faculty from our department as well. So uh, a lot of opportunity to get involved with them if you're looking to extend your uh, learning outside of the classroom. And then lastly, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about life in Ann Arbor. Uh, so Ann Arbor is an extremely vibrant city. Um, it does snow here. I'm not going to lie to anybody, but there's a lot more to it than that. So um, just a few of my favorite things I put up on this slide. Um, a lot of people in the summer like to go to, uh, tubing down the Huron River. Uh, we also have the Arboretum, which is a beautiful green space in the middle of the city that you can just uh, get, get into some greenery with, which is very important for me. Um, if you're a sports fan, Michigan Stadium, I don't think I really need to say anything more about that, but it's definitely an experience. 
Um, I put a picture of my favorite bookstore, Literati. Um, it also has a coffee shop on the second floor that's phenomenal. And then um, my favorite music venue is The Ark. It's a really small, intimate venue. It's, I think, about 400 seats, and they bring some really interesting acts through. Um, but there's also museums. There's a really good food scene. Um, we've got a lot of interesting, like, bars and breweries. Um, and you can ask um, the panel if there's anything specific that they personally enjoy. Hi, everyone. So uh, my name is Haley Tomlinson. I'm the one that was just talking to you. Um, I am also going to be moderating the chat throughout this, so bear with me if I kind of seem like focusing on my computer. I promise it's because I'm focusing on you. Um, so I have with me two of my classmates. So um, real quick, we're going to give you the opportunity to ask all your questions. Um, but just to introduce ourselves. Um, so as I said, my name is Haley Tomlinson. I'm originally from Michigan. I'm from the thumb of Michigan, uh, but I did live in Chattanooga, Tennessee for a few years before coming back to graduate school. I'm a second year master's in health services administration candidate in the program. Um, uh, before I came back to graduate school, I worked in direct patient care and also a little bit in nonprofit administration. Um, and then this summer, I did my internship at MultiCare Health System in Tacoma, Washington. I worked on a variety of projects, but uh, primarily um, around more profitability inpatient analysis and some of the virtual health space. Um, and after graduation, I will be joining Beaumont Health in Detroit as an administrative fellow. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate. Um, I'm a second year MHSA student as well. Um, I attended the University of Michigan for my undergraduate degree in international studies. Um, after that, I worked for about four years in a role centered around healthcare consulting and patient advocacy, and then I came back to school to get my master's here. Um, this summer, I had an internship that was in the payer space, and um, after graduation, I will also be joining a Healthcare Service Corporation in Chicago, the major Blue Cross. They manage five plans, so very excited about that. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Nikita Ramachandran. I am also a second year MHSA student. Um, my undergraduate training is in dentistry. Um, I come from India. Uh, I worked for a couple of years in direct patient care um, clinically uh, before I moved here um, for, the, for my master's program. Uh, this past summer, I interned um, with a subsidiary of Anthem uh, called AIM Specialty Health, where I was in the Department of uh, Client Management and Partnerships. Uh, and post-graduation, I am looking for full-time positions uh, in the provider space for a change. Okay. So please feel free to post your questions in the chat box. Uh, we are here for you. We want to answer the things that you want to hear about. So before we get too sidetracked, I did want to go back to a question we had before, which was asking about the Global Management and Policy Certificate Program. Uh, so we do have certificates offered by the school. Those are offered separately from our program. Those um, are not administrated by our department. However, we do have within our department a global health management and policy track. Uh, so that's separate from the certificate. Those are two different things. Um, so the global track is essentially you submit um, an additional application within our, our program specifically. Um, and sorry, what's that? <laughs> Sorry about that. There was some noise that came through. Um, you submit an application within our program specifically, um, and that will, so a subset of our cohort that's already incoming is selected. I think they take up to six or eight students for that. Um, and then you have a more global focus within your own uh, education. Um, there's a few specific classes that you take with that. I believe there's more information about that on the website, but if you can't find that, please feel free to shoot me an email and I will send you some more information about that. Um, the certificate program, as I said, is separate. That's administered through the school. Um, the certificate programs uh, can be a little challenging, so um, it does require the use of a lot of your electives, and I am by no means an expert on any of the certificates. Uh, you should be able to find more information about that on the school website. But again, if you have any difficulties um, or if you want to talk to somebody that's doing the global program with us currently, please feel free to send me an email. Um, you should have it, but I'm going to put it in the chat box again just in case. And um, I will connect you with someone. So I wanted to make sure I addressed that. Oh, yes, lots of questions. I'm so excited. Okay. So I uh, had a question. So 
can you guys talk a little bit about your experience with the student mentorship program? So our first year, second year program. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so last year I was matched up with someone who shared a lot of my common interests and had somewhat of a similar background to me. Um, we would meet occasionally throughout the year. Um, I think a lot of people have kind of a, a varying degree of interaction with their mentor and it's really up to the two people to kind of set that precedent and determine, you know, how often they want to meet, what kind of sort of working relationship they want to have. Some people become really good friends. Some people keep it a little bit more professional. It's really just kind of up to both of the students to decide on what that's going to look like. Um, this year, I was matched with someone who is an international student. We have very different interests and backgrounds, um, but that's also been a really great experience. And um, overall, I think that's um, a really great resource to have, especially as a student coming into the program. Um, it's, I thought it was very helpful last year, and hopefully I've been helpful this year. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I agree completely with what Kate said. I was I'm matched. Sure. Uh, That's me, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, when I was coming into the program, I was matched um, with another international student who was uh, in their second year. And she has been a great resource to me, not just uh, through the program, but even now, because I'm still connected with her when it comes to finding full-time positions. Uh, so she really mentored me through all of the help and support that I needed, especially being an international student, which I was really grateful for. Um, and now when I'm in my second year, I have um, also been matched with um, not an international student, um, but someone who has been in India for a few years and then moved here. Um, so I, she, this, similar to what Kate said, she has a, she's been brought up in a very different way, and I'm learning a lot from her and hopefully, again, teaching her a lot of things that she had questions with. Um, so I would say that the student mentorship program was really valuable, both with me being a mentee as well as a mentor. Yeah, and I completely agree with everything they said. I won't uh, restate everything, but um, I was actually matched both with my second year mentor and now with my first year mentee. Uh, people that were very similar to me in terms of age and interest. Um, and so I don't think that gave us any better or worse of an experience, um, but she was definitely, my mentor was super supportive. Um, she was like my go-to in terms of what electives I wanted to take. Um, she told me a lot about Ann Arbor because even though I'm from Michigan, Ann Arbor a bubble of uh, things um, that I had no experience with. And uh, my mentee now has um, some of the same interests as me in terms of like mental health and um, just wanting to go into the provider space. And so, um, again, we've been able to connect in and support each other. And even my mentee, like I learned from her, too. She has very different experience coming into the program than I do, but we're interested in going in a similar direction. So it's been a great experience. All right. How many students pursue an administrative fellowship per cohort and what are the most common placements, if any? So I'll answer that and then. Um, I guess neither of you are pursuing a fellowship, so I guess I'll just take that one, actually. Uh, so we have, I would say, maybe a third of our cohort, maybe 30, 40 percent pursued an administrative fellowship, maybe a little more. Um, last year's was lower than it is this year, so it very much varies cohort to cohort. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of support in the department for that. Um, so similar to, I guess I didn't really touch on this, but when you're going through the internship process, uh, the department has a lot of uh, resources in terms of places that are looking for us to come work for them. So um, as a Michigan student, we have a good reputation. Uh, employers are interested in having us come work for them. And so we have a coordinator specifically for that in our department. We also have a great career um, services center at the school level, both of which uh, are in contact with a lot of employers about internship opportunities as well as administrative fellowship opportunities and other postgraduate employment. Um, so I would say this is like a terribly broad answer, but because I do not have the specifics in front of me and I don't want to totally lie, I'm going to say somewhere between like 30 and 55 percent will do a fellowship in any given year. Um, and then the common placements, I don't know that there's any I would say like jump out as like, oh, we always have someone go there. Um, I can tell you that we are very competitive in terms of fellowship placement. We have a very high placement rate, so people that are interested in them usually get them. Um, uh, so 
we have, I guess Trinity is fairly common just because Trinity is such a big um, employer. I think we have a decent amount that go there, but like, uh, so this year, just some of the ones I know off the top of my head, we have someone going to uh, <clears throat> UPMC, I'm going to Beaumont, we have one at Michigan Medicine, I think a couple at Trinity, um, where else? Henry Ford. Henry Ford Health System in Detroit. Um, we have some out-of-staters. UCLA. UCLA. Penn Medicine. Yeah. I think somebody, is somebody going to Mass Gym? No. I haven't heard of them. Uh, someone went to um, MedStar UCSF. last year, Cleveland Clinic. So um, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and um, another great thing, just to add this, uh, so when you're a student here, you we have a spreadsheet of um, both where everyone interned in their previous years and also where people went after graduation. So if there's a specific fellowship that you're interested in, uh, you can go back up to, I think we have back through 2015, uh, and if you asked Tyra, she probably has more than that. Um, and you can just reach out and ask them about their experience and uh, network with them as well. So a lot of opportunity around that. Uh, what elective classes have you taken? And I'm going to add, it's not on there, but what did you like the most? What was your favorite? Oh, let's see. I took data management last semester, which I think we were both in. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also taken the Lean Six Sigma course and I got my green belt certification. Um, last semester I took a change management class at Ross that was really interesting. Um, this semester I'm in um, a health insurance class and also I might be taking an Excel class. That's a <laughs> still a question mark. <laughs> um, I think what I've really enjoyed is being able to take classes across different schools and kind of, um, you know, not only just interact with other students because there's a lot you can learn from them as well at the master's level. Um, but also, I like that the electives are also challenging. Um, so you take them because you're interested in them, but you're definitely pushed to learn new skills and apply those. And it's um, it's a really great opportunity to kind of broaden your horizons, explore things in a safe way that you might be interested in or just want to learn more about. Um, and also to really kind of hone some hard skills that you might have some opportunity to do through your other coursework, but if there's anything specific that you want to build upon and maybe add to your resume, um, you have a lot of opportunity to do that through electives. Um, yeah, I took a a lot of electives. I did uh, the data management course with Kate in my second semester. I also took a project management class uh, in the College of Entrepreneurship, uh, which is with the College of Engineering. Um, I took about three courses at the Ross School of Business, one of which was change management with Kate. Um, I also took the decision support spreadsheet, which was kind of like an Excel class, again at Ross. Uh, and a global healthcare strategy class, again, at Ross. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not taking any like this, this semester, just to keep it light. Um, but <laughs> uh, what I like the most about electives is the fact that um, you really get to work um, in a very good interdisciplinary team, especially like if you go to Ross School of Business or like the College of Engineering. Uh, and I'm sure I'm in College of um, Public Policy that I'm not in, but um, they, you get to see perspectives of different people who may not approach healthcare the same way you do, um, but it it really helps you shape some of your opinions too. Um, and as Kate said, um, you it, it's a very different setup from what we generally see in our program because we are so healthcare focused, um, but it's nice to step out and um, see what people think of the situation in healthcare and not just healthcare, but like other industries. Like if you go to the College of Engineering, you meet engineering students who have such a different perspective than what you have. Uh, and I found that to be the most interesting thing for me when it came to picking electives and meeting new people. So I've taken, I don't even know if I remember everything I've taken. <laughs> um, I took a business communications class in Ross. Um, I took uh, leading and leveraging difference, which was also at Ross. Um, I took the Lean Six Sigma course, uh, got my green belt certification from that, which is a super handy thing to be able to do, in my opinion. Uh, I'm currently in a uh, 
healthcare reform in the U.S., which is uh, largely directed at insurance um, and how that is structured and has evolved. And this semester, I will also be taking a healthcare strategy class and a project management class. I feel like there's more, but I'm not going to think of what they were. So that's the basics. Uh, I would say, okay, I, I'm sorry because I didn't give you guys this option, but I'm going to say that my favorite class that I took was not an elective. <laughs> Um, so we can go back to this. Yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite core? If nobody... So my favorite elective right now, honestly, uh, as much as I am kind of struggling with the content a little bit, I really like my health insurance class that I'm taking right now. Uh, it's just not um, not a part of the industry that I'm particularly super interested in going into, and so it's one that I haven't done a lot of my own independent research on, and just seeing how health insurance has evolved and how that's influenced like the provider market and just healthcare delivery in general has been really interesting. Um, so I'm gonna ad lib and real quick say, what's your favorite core course uh, for which I'm going to say our health management organizations class because that's been my favorite course overall. Uh, and that's the second sort of introduction. So we have introduction to health systems I, some sort of sort of like that title, um, HMP 600, and then HMP 603 is the health management organizations, and that is where you do a lot of casework. That's where you first like really dive into case studies. So, and they're targeted in a lot of different things. It's taught by one of our alumni who is also a consultant, and so she brings a lot of her real world experience into the classroom and talks about things that she has seen or is currently working on, which really makes the content a lot. I won't say more interesting, but a lot more tangible in a way. Um, so that's been my favorite. What about you guys? Um, okay, so I'm gonna steal Haley's answer. Uh, I <laughs> also like uh, our health management organizations class, um, I'd say the most, um, and she's already given you the reason, so I'm not gonna go deeper into that. But um, the other class that I really like is our capstone class, hmm. um, because uh, it, uh, as Haley mentioned before, our capstone class is more like the real life project work that we do for this um, whole semester, which will be about five months. Um, and it gives us the opportunity to really interact with um, outside organizations, which I feel is very beneficial, especially now that we're going to go out into the actual healthcare career space. Uh, post graduation, and it doesn't just teach us how to work on these complex problems, like the one that I'm working on is again. Uh, a business plan for um, expansion of school telehealth services that my company is working on. Um, but apart from those hard skills, it also teaches us a lot about soft skills, like how do we communicate with uh, people on the other side of the table? What are some things you got to keep in mind? Uh, and I feel like these things really help in shaping how we're going to be, I'd say like four months from now. Uh, so I find that class very valuable. So you both took my answer. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I would say those two classes are probably um, my favorites so far in terms of our core classes. And I think, honestly, it just comes down to there are the two classes where I feel like we've been able to really apply the skills that we've been learning and the theories that we've been learning in all classes. Um, this, you know, might maybe as like a, a third option, which um, I'm sure not everyone agrees with, but um, I actually also enjoyed our um, operations and decision making okay. class, mm -hmm. which we took last semester. Yep. Um, it presented us with like every week or every two weeks we were learning a new way to analyze a problem mm -hmm. or data in mm -hmm. Excel or with other tools that I had never heard of. Um, and so it allowed us to kind of take these again, sort of real world problems and then come up with solutions to them. And um, it was pretty challenging at times. I think I definitely learned <laughs> yeah. some skills that I <laughs> had no idea I would even need, but can definitely see how they'd be important and applicable. So I, I would say as a, another core class, that was a really good one. Um, and then as far as electives, um, I mean, my, my main interest has been in health insurance. And I think we, kind of see a little less of that in our coursework, like our core courses, um, because I think we are focused on like the provider setting a lot, which is pretty normal. Um, 
so I've been, I've enjoyed taking um, the current health insurance class that I'm in. Um, it's a little bit more technical than the course that you are in because I think your uh, yours is policy focused. Yes. And uh, mine is a little bit more, you know, covering things like underwriting and reinsurance and all sorts of different topics within the insurance space and kind of how all that stuff works, uh, which has been really interesting for me and will hopefully be useful to me when I graduate and start working at an insurance company. So yeah, those would be my answers. Awesome. Uh, okay, so Sabrina asked, are there any opportunities to work as a TA? Uh, so if you guys have anything to add to this, feel free, but I'll just take that one really quickly. Uh, so we do have the opportunity as graduate students to work as graduate student instructors as well as research assistants. Um, that being said, those opportunities are not particularly plentiful within the School of Public Health. Uh, we only recently started our undergraduate program here. Um, PhD candidates are given first priority because they have to have funding. And so a lot of the GSI positions in our school specifically will go to our PhD candidates. That being said, I do know several of our classmates that GSI in other schools on campus. Um, so for example, one has a background in women's studies. She GSIs in the women's studies um, program. And there are several other instances like that. Uh, so yes and no would be my answer to that. Um, Definitely opportunities if you're willing to go around campus. Um, and there are a couple on campus. We, um, our cohort, I think almost always GSIs for our accounting class. Um, but, and I, I'm not super familiar with some of the newer undergraduate courses, how much opportunity is there, but um, there's definitely like opportunities to seek out. Um, how should one apply for scholarships? So I will say in terms of the department scholarships, um, you're considered for those along with your application. Uh, if you have specific questions on those, um, feel free to reach out to me and I will um, forward that along to someone who can give you maybe more information on uh, how those specifically work. In terms of scholarships outside the school, I don't know if either of you applied for scholarships or have any experience with that. I personally did not. I didn't either. Um, but I will say, I mean, a lot of the uh, like the case competitions and things yes. that are circulated around, there are all sorts of different like some sometimes they're writing contests or, you know, you can submit something. And there's a lot of opportunities that are just circulated around through emails that we'll receive from whether it's Tyra or somebody else in the department mm -hmm. or opportunities where, you know, either you can form a team and compete and then there's a monetary prize along with bragging rights <laughs> or, um, you know, like a writing at something and that way. Um, so there are smaller opportunities like that, but I would be hard pressed to find a list. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would direct you to the Office of Financial Aid if yeah. that's of specific interest to you. Um, I, like I said, none of us particularly experience that, so we don't have a ton of great advice, but um, OFA would definitely have a good answer for you. Um, okay, how many students are in the MPH class each year and where do they come from? <laughs> so um, I'm going to try and give you rough statistics. I would say our class, the second year class, is maybe 30%, 35 to 40% MPH. Um, the incoming, so the first years right now, I think are closer to 50-50. Um, they may even be a little bit above 50% of the MPH track. So again, that varies a lot from year to year. Um, I don't particularly know why. I will say I think some of it at this point, this is my own personal speculation and not at all factual, so please don't take this as fact. Um, I will say I noticed in the incoming cohort there's a larger percentage coming in that now have backgrounds in public health from their undergrad, which was something that when I was in school a million years ago was not even a thing. So um, that may have some influence on it. I, I really couldn't speak to that. Um, they come from just like the rest of our student body all across the United States and all over the world. Um, if you have specific questions about the MPH program, um, you can either feel free to put them in the chat box and none of us are MPHs, but we will certainly do our best. Um, or you can send me an email directly and I can connect you with an MPH student. If you let me know maybe a little bit about your specific interests, I'm happy to find someone who um, has similar interests and connect you via email. So. Whatever works the best for you. I don't know if either of you have any. Uh, okay. 
yeah, that was one that I was like, oh. <laughs> um, are there as many connections and job opportunities in other states across the U.S. as there are in the Michigan area? Yeah, I'd say yes. Um, we have, so I would say um, a lot of um, your chances of finding a full-time opportunity um, depends on your networking skills and how um, willing you are to go out and talk to people. We have alumni literally all over the country and all over the world. Uh, so it's not necessarily that you have to be in the Michigan space. Uh, I'm not from Michigan and I, I don't necessarily plan to be on Michigan post-graduation, um, but I do know alumni who are uh, possibly in every state there is across this country. Um, so as long as you're willing to reach out to them and talk to them and get to know more about the organization that they're working in, uh, you'll have opportunities all over, not just. Yeah, I, I would definitely second that. Um, I think the networking with alumni is one of the really strong points of this program. It's a really great opportunity and they make themselves available to us, which is really great. They don't have to do that, but they do most of the time. So um, that's been something that's been really helpful to me in um, my internship search and my job search. Um, and then I would also say, though, that within Southeast Michigan, there are so many health systems, True. Um, it's, which is kind of an anomaly. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity here, and we do have a lot of alumni around here. So it is a little bit easier, I think, or it can seem easier to connect with people that are in the same geographic region. Maybe they're a little bit more connected to the school still. Um, but that said, there are alumni all over the place and in every industry. And the Michigan name does, you know, it's very easily recognizable, and um, usually the alumni are, are really willing to help students and engage with you and give you some time if you ask for it. Yeah, the Michigan Mafia is very real. Um, that's <laughs> that's absolutely a true thing. Um, and I totally agree with everything they said. I think I will agree it may seem easier to connect here. We do have a very high density of alumni here in Michigan, uh, and Southeast Michigan is absolutely just saturated with healthcare organizations. Um, but for example, when I went out for my internship in Washington, I didn't know anybody in Washington. Uh, I was there for maybe a week and one of the VPs regionally uh, was a Michigan alum and he reached out and was like, hey, heard you're from Michigan, go blue. Like, do you wanna meet up and get a coffee? So uh, definitely exist everywhere. And our, I have never encountered an alumni who is not willing to give you 30 minutes of their time. Like, they all wanna connect and engage and support you. Um, you talked about the school's greatest assets, but what do each of you think is the school or program's biggest limitation? Mm, hard one. <laughs> I'm not first. You're not going for <laughs> it. Um, a tough one. Um, I think one of the things that I wish we had a little bit more of is flexibility within the curriculum. Mm -hmm. But I do know that that is something that's currently being worked on. Yes. Um. We've, I will say one of the great things about our school and our department in particular is how open they are to feedback. And we've given a lot of that and they're taking it and responding. And um, so there's a specific committee that's been created now to reassess some of the curriculum requirements, find a way to make it a little more flexible for students so that we can accommodate even more electives um, and really tailor our education to what we're specifically interested in. Um, so right now, I would say, you know, the lack of flexibility can be frustrating for some for some people, especially if you have a lot of different interests. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I am confident that they'll find a solution to that pretty soon. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to answer the question, but I do want to really like agree with what you just said, which is that. In terms of places I've been academically, uh, this department is extremely receptive to hearing feedback and actually like acts on it. So um, it is something that has been very frustrating for our cohort, the lack of flexibility. Um, but they've heard that and are actively working to change that for next year's incoming class. So um, it's something that like they're not just, you know, well, that's the way it is. Like they're definitely trying to hear us and help us be as successful as we can be. Um, my 
this may be a cop out and I'm sorry if it sounds that way, but it's really not. For me, the biggest limitation is just the financial expectation that comes with being in this program. Um, tuition is not cheap at the University of Michigan and um, it can be a hard adjustment, especially from someone who worked for many years coming back to being a financially unstable graduate student. Um, there's also just, there's a, a coin toss on this, right? Because on the one hand, I will say our school does a great job in terms of providing like course readings and materials at no cost to a student. So I used to spend hundreds of dollars on books um, in school and now pretty much everything they give to you in terms of like your readings with very few exceptions. Um, but there's a lot of extra curricular things and it's not a, a big financial commitment, but it's a lot of, you know, $10 for this and $30 for this and $20 for this. Um, and it adds up. And that I think is the hardest thing for me is um, wanting to be a part of all those things, but not having the financial uh, resources to do so, I would say. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. I would say one, um, I agree with what um, actually what Kate and Katie said, um, but one thing that I feel is a slight limitation, or at least something that I'm, I'm currently experiencing, uh, would be the slight lack of um, full-time positions support in the sense that um, our program does a really good job of placing um, those who are interested in fellowships. Um, but I, I, that's not to say that we don't have um, people coming or recruiting for full-time positions at all. But um, I still feel like that is something that we can receive a little more support for. Um, like MISA, which is a student organization, for example, does a career expo every year, uh, which is going to be happening in March now, which is um, which is really helpful, which is great. Um, but I would like our department to do that rather than a student organization going through all of that trouble and doing that, um, just because that's kind of an expectation coming into the program. Um, because they do such a great job of placing us for internships that you kind of expect that kind of help for a full-time position. Um, but that being said, um, like I said, there's still like so many alumni, and if you reach out to Tyra or anyone in the department and ask about someone who's at some organization that you want to connect with, they do a good job of letting you know. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's the one thing that I would like to see more. I think that's right. Yeah. All right. Uh, can first year MPH students that have previous public health experience get an assistantship position as a TA for undergrad classes? I'm inclined to say yes, but I don't know that for certain. Do either of you know anybody that TA their first year in our pro their first semester in our program? I don't, I don't think I knew anyone. Hmm. I would assume that the answer is yes, um, but I don't want to lie to you. So <laughs> tentatively, yes. Um, if you shoot me an email, I can try and um, ask and get that answer specifically for you uh, because I am not 100% positive. Um, and I, from what I've seen, a lot of these positions, um, they depend on, if it's within the program, they depend on the professors too. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say if you really just like go up and talk to a professor, set up a time to talk with them and express your interests, um, they will definitely help you. Even if it's not a TA position, you might just be lucky enough to get a, an RA, like a research assistant, or help them in some level um, that will satisfy what you're interested in, too. So, yeah, I totally agree with that. All of our faculty are extremely open to talking to you yeah. about anything you would be interested in talking about. Mm -hmm. um, are any of you dual degree students? If so, how did that affect your school experience? Nope. No, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, none of us are. Um, I can tell you just from what I so we do have several duels in yep. our cohort yep. mm -hmm. um, that are MBA, MHSA, um, and they are currently at Ross this year. So the way our program works, and you may know this, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but um, You'll spend your first year in, exclusively in one program, your second year exclusively in the other program, and then your third year kind of floating between the two, or at least that's how it traditionally works. Um, so I know from at least my perspective of someone that has classmates that are not with us right now, um, we haven't seen them in, you know, since last May. <laughs> so um, 
in that sense, I think it may be a little bit like disconnecting in terms of bonding with your cohort. Obviously, that is entirely influenceable by the time that you spend outside of the program, like that social activities that we do a lot of together. Um, and so I think if you, you know, make the effort to stay engaged with your cohort um, and like come back and do social things, then that's absolutely feasible. Um, I also think like, again, speaking of someone that hasn't done it, I feel like you would get uh, maybe a, a little bit more of like a richer experience because you are exposed to three cohorts instead of one. So you would have the cohort that you start with, the cohort at the other school, and then the cohort that you graduate with. Um, so I think that's like a unique opportunity to get three times as many perspectives in my own personal opinion. Um, but I'm going to follow up with that and say, again, if that's something that you would like to talk to a current student here about, please shoot me an email and I can do with one of our MBA MHSA dual students and you can ask them about their experience personally. I don't know if any of you have any thoughts on that at all. Not really. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just I'm winging it on that one. Uh, how do graduate students find housing? <laughs> we don't. We live in our car. No. <laughs> yeah, so it, Ann Arbor is, can be tricky because in Ann Arbor, typically the housing market, all the not all, but a lot of the properties are rented about a year in advance. So, for example, like if you're looking for housing for next fall, a lot of people that are already here will have signed their leases back in October, 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 October yeah. November, and be set up. So coming into the program can be challenging, um, but I think typically the Facebook groups that are created yeah. are really helpful. Um, a lot of people find roommates through those groups. Um, I think the most common situation is a big house, typically houses with like five or six bedrooms or something like that for a, a higher number of people are harder to rent out. So there's more of those on the market. And if you can find a couple people even from different schools within the School of Public Health, um, I know a couple of people that have done that and that's worked out really well for them. Do you have any other? Um, yeah, I agree. I'd say one, um, that, uh, people who have already been here a year or two definitely um, kind of have an advantage. Uh, but again, you always have people who are looking for roommates because if you live with a large number of people, there's always someone who's graduating. You don't necessarily have to be from the same year, so there'll always be a spot open. Um, when it comes to um, thinking about this financially, um, Ann Arbor is expensive, no doubt, um, but it really depends a lot on um, how close you want to be to your school or how much you're willing to travel. Um, I don't know how much you guys know this, but Ann Arbor has a central campus and a north campus. Um, and School of Public Health is in Central Campus, but generally housing in Central Campus is a lot more expensive than North Campus. Um, North and Central in general are just easily connected by a bus. I live on North Campus, uh, and I have no issues traveling because it takes me like probably 10 or 15 minutes by bus, but my housing is considerably cheaper. Um, so I am, I've been there two years and I'm completely happy with the arrangement. So it really depends upon your convenience versus your financial preferences. Um, there's, there is plenty of housing. It's not that there isn't housing, and especially if you say you have a car, you, you're okay with driving. There's still more housing outside of, like, on the outskirts of Ann Arbor too. Um, so, although I would say um, if you're coming here, definitely start looking early and don't leave it until the last minute. Because that's going to be difficult. Yes. So just to add a couple supplemental. So. Um, there, one should be in your um, email that I sent about this webinar, uh, a couple links to some housing through the university. Um, those are extremely helpful. Um, we also send out communication um, after the admittance deadline um, that I have included like an entire basically newsletter on housing options and different forms of on-campus versus off-campus housing and where you can kind of start your search for those. Um, to the commuting point, so I commuted for a year and a half. I just moved to Ann Arbor in January. Um, and so that's also an option that can, if you don't mind driving, it's a lot more affordable to live outside of the city of Ann Arbor. Um, but the, I mean, it, like Nikita phrased it, it really depends on your uh, financial preferences versus your convenience preferences. So 
Um, there's a lot of options. There's also roommate finders. Um, the Facebook groups are really great for people that are coming in. There will be um, admissions ambassadors on the Facebook page that can help connect you to those resources as well. Um, but there's a lot of housing options in Ann Arbor. It's just about finding the one that's right for you. Um, and I will absolutely say that this incoming portion is like a little different because there are people graduating and people coming in for a new year. Um, but once you're here, leasing starts very early. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, definitely don't put it off to the last minute. All right. If you guys have any other questions, please put them in there. We've got about 10 minutes left. Um, what's a piece of advice you have for applicants? And very broad. <laughs> yeah, well, what's a piece of what, what do you wish someone would have told you in mm. their seats? So uh, I think something that um, is usually addressed during orientation um, is this idea of imposter syndrome, mm. Um, mm. <laughs> which mm -hmm. is basically the feeling like maybe you don't belong here or everyone is so impressive around you and you feel a little self-conscious. Um, I definitely experienced that um, coming into school, and I think that um, that was definitely common, I think, at least for a little while. Um, it's pretty normal for everyone to kind of feel that way, a little bit uncomfortable at first. But um, I think once you realize that, you know, everybody is really impressive and really smart and you can easily just break through that barrier and become good friends. And the faster you do that, the better, I think. Um, so that's like one thing if I could go back and do differently, I would just kind of tell myself not to worry about that and <laughs> just make some, some good friends early on. Um, and I guess the other thing I would really speak to is how important networking has been. Um, I think with mm -hmm. both with alumni, but also with, you know, people that are in the second year cohort um, or just like visiting the school at different events, um, recruiting even. I mean, it's just so important, something that I didn't really think would matter as much as it has. Um, so that's something that I would encourage everyone to kind of get comfortable doing as early as possible. Um, I think the one thing um, that I would say is um, things pile up in grad school really fast. Uh, you can take, you will take up a lot of things without realizing how much work you're taking up. Um, and you might come to a point where you feel that it's just not going to happen. Um, so I would say that definitely from day one regulate what you're taking on and I wish somebody told me that because there have been points that I've taken on too much uh, and I know Haley can attest to that with me um, but uh, yeah so definitely um, regulate yourself from the from the first day um, also make sure you have time or keep time aside for self-care um, because again, there are going to be different points through grad school that are going to be stressed. It's going to be, be finding an internship, what classes you want to take, what are you going to do post graduation. There's always going to be a point where you're stressed, but make sure that you have time set aside. Um, I'd say at least a couple of times a week, or even more, depending on how uh, how you know you are as a person, um, to just relax, maybe meet up some friends, have some stand-in. Um, lunch dates or breakfast times that you can catch up with people who you really want to because even if you are really good friends there are times that you take different classes you may not see each other a lot or you're doing something else um, but it's always nice to touch base um, it's always nice to talk it out it's always nice to literally just take two nights off and just watch Netflix all night and that'll make you feel really nice so yeah, yeah. <laughs> you stole my self-care bit I know you know that's my thing um, <laughs> So I guess I'm going to provide the antithesis to that, which is like the delicate balance that is grad school, the balance between self-care and like taking advantage of all the opportunities that are here. Um, so <coughs> my advice would be there are a lot of resources at this school, um, both within the School of Public Health and at the university in general, um, but not all of them are going to be put right in front of you. You have to actively seek them out and like make the effort to find them and utilize them. Um, so my advice would be to do that to within reason like you don't want to join everything because you, yeah there's a there's definitely a tipping point of too much um, a point that I am well acquainted with, <laughs> but, but 
you need to like find the things that matter most to you and that are going to make the biggest difference for you and your professional and personal goals and uh, really take advantage of those. Um, and as like kind of a tangent to that, I would say get involved with the department here. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to, in addition to like being in a student org or something like that, there's a lot of opportunity to work directly with our faculty and the department itself. Um, and that's been one of my favorite experiences here is um, really like seeing how the program that is shaping us is working and like being a part of that has been very exciting for me. So, yeah. Um, okay. Do you mind sharing the other offers you received when you applied and the most important reason that made you choose UMich? So I'm going to exclude myself from this immediately because I only applied to this program. So, um, I cannot tell you what my comparison factors were because there weren't any. I can tell you that the reason I only applied to Michigan was hands down, no question, the alumni now. That 100% like just the the Michigan Mafia and like the mentorship opportunities were very well advertised for this program in terms of connecting with alumni. Um, that's what made me apply to this program. Um, yeah, so I... <laughs> I applied to, I think, like four schools. <laughs> so Michigan, um, Boston University, Emory, and very randomly, the University of Colorado in Boulder. <laughs> but that was mainly because I had two of my best friends that were going there. <laughs> it was really fun. So I going to the visit days for Emory and Boston University, um, both really great, strong programs. Both schools offer a lot of great things. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to like find a school that's top 10 that doesn't, you know, offer a great experience and a good education. Um, I think ultimately what made me choose Michigan is I knew without a doubt that coming here would challenge me in ways that aren't simply academic. Um, so mm -hmm. I just from my experience in undergrad, and then also I knew someone who had attended this program a few years prior, and in talking to that person, realized how much more Michigan was, you know, aside from just the the strong curriculum that it offers, and you know, the, the professors who are wonderful. Um, so, so that was a really big thing for me. I wanted to be pushed professionally and on, on like a personal level as well to really mature and develop and build skills that were going to help me in my career and not just build, um, you know, like content knowledge. Um, and then the other big factor for me is just knowing that I, I like Ann Arbor a lot and I had been here for a couple of years and it was a really great opportunity for me to stay close to family as well, which is something that was important to me. So you have to kind of weigh your, personal preferences with, you know, like, are you willing to move and be far from family and friends to go to a new area? Is that what you're looking for? Some people are looking for an opportunity to kind of switch things up and get a change of pace. Grad school is a great opportunity to do that. Um, so you really have to just kind of take your personal preferences, weigh them with your professional goals and, you know, what you're looking for out of like an academic program to find a, a place that's going to be the right fit for you. Um, and Michigan really just kind of tick all my boxes and um, yeah, so I've, I've been very happy with my choice. <laughs> um, I applied to, I don't know, I'd say like probably five or six schools. Um, when it comes to admits, I had admits from U of M, um, Boston, Emory, um, University of Pittsburgh. I was actually leaning towards both these schools because I had people whom I knew here who were in the programs already. Um, some of the, so I had a couple of reasons why I chose, uh, chose U of M. Um, the biggest would probably be the alumni network. Um, I had heard a lot about it and how, um, it gave a very good opportunity to network, not just in the program, but we keep having these meet and greets and stuff like that that really helps out. Um, so that was a big deciding factor for me. Also, the fact that the program was, I wouldn't even say top 10, it was a top three um still is so that was um again a huge push for me um and um personally um because i come from india i come from a very different temperature a very different um <laughs> life setting um I, I grew up in the city so that 
Ann Arbor is really different from that. Um, never saw snow in my life. Now I'm in snow like, 100, 150 days of the year. Um, hey, now we're not that bad. Don't scare them. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still downplaying it. 150 days still like okay. uh, No, but I, I love it here. Uh, I was, I've been here in Ann Arbor like a year and a half now. I was in Chicago for my, for my internship in the summer. So both sides of being in a city and a town in the U.S. Um, I really like Ann Arbor, and I know for a fact that if I move out of this place, I'm going to miss it terribly. Um, so, yeah, I'd say all of these things, um, both personal as well as professional choices, are what brought me here. Awesome. All right, so we've got just a couple minutes left. If anybody has one last question, feel free to put it in there. Um, otherwise, what's just your favorite thing, like, in Ann Arbor that you would want to share? Or like university or Ann Arbor, I'll let you pick. But okay. Not school related, just like not environment related. related. I love the food scene. <laughs> and I'm I'm so know, glad. I know. <laughs> I just have to say, I I mean, I've lived in in Ann Arbor for a long time now, and um, I've always just been so impressed with how much variety there is, how many new restaurants are opening up all the time. There's just like I mean, I've been here for so long. There's still so many places on my list that I haven't gotten to. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just, it's great in terms of, yeah, if you're looking for like a fun place to hang out with friends, there's a ton of places to do that downtown. Um, a lot of interesting music, uh, like you were mentioning. So I think the town itself just has a lot of fun stuff to offer. And uh, if you're here in the summer, it's awesome. <laughs> There's events like Top of the Park, uh, which is basically like a month long thing where um, it's kind of like an outdoor, I don't even know, they, they host like a couple hours every weeknight, sometimes on the weekends too, of um, activities and screening movies or live music with like food trucks and all the stuff and it's free for everyone. Um, There's just a lot of great, great events and things going on here. So yeah, plenty of stuff to do. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. um, but yeah, the second that, definitely the food scene. Uh, <laughs> and trust me, if you are someone who likes food, you are definitely going to have a list when you get here. Um, we can provide you one. <laughs> yes. We would be happy to. Yes. For perspective, Nikita and I get brunch every Tuesday, and we have still not been to every place we would like to try. And this has been going on for about a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, um, not just that, we have also, I think, never been to a place a second time. Like, yeah. every time that we go out, we have a new place to try. So, um, yeah, like, I would say, one, the food scene. Two, um, there are a lot of opportunities, not just in Ann Arbor, but if you, like, travel just maybe an hour or a couple of hours out, you still have a lot of things to do. Michigan itself is really beautiful. Uh, and you would not, if you are from some someone who's not from Michigan, you would probably not come back to Michigan just to sightsee. Um, but I I traveled a whole ton in the summer because of, um, of my travel from Chicago and back. Um, but Michigan has some beautiful sites when it comes to the lakes, if you go to the Upper Peninsula. And I would say definitely make a drive out to those places because I don't think you'll see some of those things anywhere else in the U.S. as you will here. Yeah, Michigan is, I mean, I'm a Michigan native, <laughs> but, like, Michigan is beautiful. Um, my favorite thing besides food. <laughs> um, so I'm a really big craft beer fan. There's some really good breweries here that I'm a big fan of. Um, but honestly, this is, like, for a lot of people, probably not a thing. But I grew up in, like, very rural, rural Michigan. Um, and then, like, real rural. And then I went to a college that was like not necessarily a small university but it was in a town that only existed because of the college so like there wasn't a lot there um and then I lived in Chattanooga Tennessee which is a very vibrant city and like full of a ton of stuff to do but it's all very spread out so I think something I really appreciate about Ann Arbor is that one there's great public transportation and you can get anywhere in Ann Arbor with either like walking or cruising and two that a lot of it is just like in a condensed walkable area like if I'm going out for an evening with my friends, we can go to several different places 
with like different things to do um, without having to like get in a car and drive 20 minutes, which is a brand new experience for me. I recognize if you've ever lived in a city, it's probably not that exciting. But for someone that has never lived in like an easily like travelable place, uh, that's a big deal. So um, that is one of my favorite things. It's just like not just the variety of things to do, but the fact that I can get to all of them without like having to get in my car and drive out. So and the Great Lakes, if you're coming to Michigan, go to the Great Lakes yes. because if you, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. There's, okay. Can I add one more thing? Yes. I just thought of this. Um, so for anyone that's a sports fan, or even if you're not a sports fan, um, the games here, so from football to hockey mm, to yep. basketball, um, I mean, those are just like the major three I can think of right now, but there are so many fun games that you can go to. And Ann Arbor in the fall around football season is just like something crazy. I mean, the entire city is just booming. There is tailgates everywhere. Um, it's just really fun. It's a really cool thing to experience. Um, so I would say that's another thing that I really like about Ann Arbor here. It's, it's easy to, to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd add thing. to that. Um, I, I'm not a football, football fan where I come from. The game doesn't even exist. Um, but, but coming here, I would say in your two years, definitely have, have to experience a football game in the stadium. You will go to the stadium to graduate at the end of it all, but the atmosphere and the environment when you go for one of the games, especially in the in fall, as Kate said, is, I would say, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. You have to have it. Also, this is unrelated to any of these things, but just thinking about the things I like about Ann Arbor, as you see, there's no shortage. Um, <laughs> is that like for being a city, Ann Arbor has a lot of green space that's either in the city or like nearby, um, very accessible via car. So um, I don't do well surrounded by cement all the time. And so it, I really appreciate that it's not hard to get out and like be in a green space um, to just like center and get away from the yeah. the hustle and bustle as it were uh, yeah all right well i think that puts us at time so thank you all for joining us kate nikita thank you for joining me mm -hmm. uh if you have any additional questions please feel free to reach out to me my email is in the chat and also in your confirmation email um if it's a question i can't answer i will connect you with someone who can so um thank you again and i hope you all have a wonderful afternoon mm -hmm.